an absolutely insane situation unfolded live on Fox News on Sean Hannity's program. <laughs> he was in the middle of interviewing the head of the quote unquote guardian angels in New York, this dude, Curtis Lee, why you guys probably heard of him. They're this sort of like street vigilante group. And in the middle of the live interview, they turned the cameras to the guardian angels, like beating up and putting in a headlock and throwing on the ground some random dude. Take a look at how all of this unfolds. If you divide 53 million by 500, that's a $106,000 debit card. Not a bad deal. I don't think they're giving them to, to, to vets that are homeless in New York City. Not that I've heard, Curtis. Well, in fact, our guys have just taken down one of the migrant guys right here on the corner, 42nd and 7th, while all can, this is Can you is pan taken. the camera? They've taken over. They've taken over. You'd like the camera over there if at all possible. Yep. Oh, you got your key open, guys. He is out of control. Out of control. There. All right. Now, Eric Adams often complains he's getting no support from the federal government to help him with the surge of Joe Biden's unvetted illegals in New York. And that could be because of the so-called border czar is a little distracted right now. According to a report, Vice President Harris has now suddenly, quote, found her footing. So uh, for those of you who are just listening, what you see is the camera pans over to this group of quote unquote guardian angels in red jackets, wrestling this man, putting him in a headlock to the ground, okay? That's what happens on screen. And then you can hear there, Sean Hannity sort of quickly changes the subject interview over and moves on <laughs> to whatever Kamala Harris segment he has up next. So later on, apparently they go back to Curtis Lewa to get an explanation of like, what the hell just happened here? Uh -huh. His story about this quote unquote migrant guy that he claims is, you know, one of these illegals that Joe Biden is letting into the city. city. He says he had been shoplifting first. The guardian angel spotted him, stopped him. He resisted. And let's just say we gave him a little pain compliance. His mother back in Venezuela felt the vibrations. Um, he's sucking concrete. The cops scraped him off the asphalt. He's on his way to jail, but they'll cut him loose. We've got to take 42nd Street back, Sean. These illegals think they own this street. They think they rule the night. This is our country. Hannity goes on to describe the role of the guardian angels as quote unquote, amazing. Well, it turns out all of that was completely a lie. Um, first of all, I'll put this up on the screen. So this is NBC News. Um, first of all, the man that they said was a quote unquote migrant is a New Yorker from the Bronx. Yeah. Let's start there. He's from the US. Number two, um, they talked to the cops. The cops said they had no proof of the shoplifting claims. They did give this guy some disorderly conduct uh, citation because they said he was disrupting a live TV interview. Mm. So apparently what actually happened here is that the guardian angels decided, you know, I don't know if this dude was really like disrupting the live TV shot, shot or whatever, but they just effectively picked him out of the crowd, um, thought that he, you know, looked brown and maybe was possibly speaking Spanish and then just like tackle him and wrestle him to the ground. And the NYPD has stopped answering questions about hey, what about the guardian angels basically like open public assault and hate crime, targeted hate crime that occurred on camera? Is there any responsibility or accountability for them whatsoever? Completely insane situation. Yeah, so Sliwa said he believed the man was a migrant because he had been speaking Spanish and because other guardians had encountered people with Spanish speakers on previous patrols. <laughs> Have you never been to New York City before? It's like, what are you talking about? People would speak Spanish there for a hundred years. Speaking Spanish um, doesn't mean that you can like yeah. beat a person up and put them in a headlock and throw them on the ground. The whole situation is totally nuts. Uh, I actually was not familiar with the group. Uh, apparently, Traces Back, you were explaining to me, from 1979, uh, whenever Sliwa founded them to, quote, patrol the streets and subways during the high crime days, um, have drawn criticism since that time, I think fairly, for allegations of targeting, um, you know, people of color mm. and criminals. Uh, so they say vigilantism is not the answer, one of the city council members. Yeah, the whole situation is nuts. Like, look, you know, people know my views on immigration. I'm not supportive of illegal migration or any of these people being in New York City. But this man is a U.S. citizen. You can't be roughing up as a private citizen random people just because they're speaking Spanish. Even if he was a migrant, in, you well, still can't. Say, yeah. First of all, even if he's a migrant, he <laughs> yeah. doesn't deserve to be beat up. Okay, that's a job for the authorities. That's not for you. If he was a shoplifter or whatever. Number two, it's like, guys, 
You can't be just be roughing up random people who are speaking Spanish in New York. Have you ever been to Times Square? It's the norm not to hear English. You know, it's like, it's mostly tourists. It's people from every, for every, everywhere else. Yeah. Only people who are in, the only people in New York who are in Times Square who are like from New York are the people who like work in those downtown office buildings who have the misfortune of having to go there. Yeah. Everybody else is just a tourist. Nobody else is hanging out If there. you actually live in right. New York, which I did for many yeah. years, you avoid Times Square exactly. at all. It's a good place. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But I mean, there's yeah. a lot to say about it. First yeah. of all, you know, the the whole thing from Slee was, oh my God, it's chaos yeah. and these migrants are taking over, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, tourists are casually walking by and everything's fine. The only disturbance is your goons roughing up for no reason, targeting this man and throwing him on the ground. And again, I just want to say the shoplifting thing is bullshit. There is no credence to that whatsoever. That's There's right. no evidence the cops are saying that didn't happen, et cetera. So I don't want to give any credence to that. Not that even if he was shoplifting, that the answer is to, you know, put him in a headlock and throw him on the ground, et cetera, et cetera. So the criminals here are the quote unquote guardian angel vigilante hate crime perpetrators out in broad public on Hannity show. Second of all, can you imagine if on MSNBC they had something like, you know, Reverend Sharpton leading a gang of people to just randomly assault some white guy on the street live on camera, can you imagine the freak out over that? I mean, that's exactly like the parallel mm -hmm. of what we watched unfold over on Fox News. And it's complete insanity. I mean, they, they lost their minds on this one. And I just... The fact that there, obviously this went viral online, but the fact that it hasn't been an even bigger deal to me speaks to a real sort of double standard that's going on here because this was completely insane to watch unfold. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by double standard? Well, like I said, yeah. if it was Reverend Sharpton well, I, okay. and leading a gang of black people to beat up some like random white dude on the street, what do you think? You think that would be national news right now? Well, absolutely, a hundred percent. We would never hear the end of it. They would be arrested. The cops wouldn't be saying like, oh, it's fine. We just, we gave the white dude a disorderly conduct um, charge because he was disrupting a live TV broadcast. It's a total double standard. I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, people literally burned, rioted, and looted for two years straight or like on camera broadcast live supported by the media. And and they no, didn't and they charges. were prosecuted. No, very, very, very. They few were people. prosecuted. Very few people the were people prosecuted. The people who were violent were prosecuted. No, that is so not soccer, true. How do you think, hold on, how do you think, down, do you think it would go down police? if the situation that I described, huh? no, do you I, think they'd be let off with, oh, it's fine. And it just would like go viral online, but no one would report on it and the, they would face no charges or whatever. Of course I'm, not. I'm not quite, listen, I'm not defending these guys whatsoever, but I'm not quite so sure that this would be like some major thing, especially if there was a racial angle to it the other way. Let's say they were like, oh, well, he beat up somebody and they beat him up. Like I, I'm not quite sure that, that those people would be prosecuted, quote unquote, to the full extent of the law because of liberal pressure. So you... I'm, You're crazy. Yeah, you no. think that a, that Reverend Sharpton could lead a gang of dudes to beat up a white dude on the street, on camera, on MSNBC, and everyone would just be like, no big deal, I mean, moving on. Me incited a riot against Jews in the 80s. Yeah, and, and it was a big deal, and we still uh, know about it. Yeah, I mean, we I know about, know about it, about we're it. still walking around. We still know like, about it. Not like he went to jail Crown for Heights it. riot, we know all yeah. about it. Sure, yeah, So we yeah, know. it was we a massive news story. Yeah. It was a big deal, What's and there were consequences. Here, they're just let off scot-free and nothing. The, the dude that they beat up is the one who got the citation. I mean, it's in the New York Times. It's in the Guardian. It's been like every major paper, we're covering it. You know, it's like, it's not like it's getting totally ignored. Now, listen, I think these guys should be arrested. Like, don't get me wrong. I support the rule of law, but I'm not going to say that, you know, quote unquote, liberal violence or whatever is, is would be e equally treated just because I did not live through that experience a couple of years ago during BLM. It was I just massive. The violence of BLM was massively covered. Massively covered. But was it massive? The people, yes, they were like, prosecuted. Some Absolutely, were prosecuted. they were prosecuted. I and mean, there are people here in Lafayette Square who tried to bring down a statue and never faced a single charge. People who broke down looted cities, uh, people who, who burned down charges. The so some people faced charges. Faced charges. Very few people who burned down a Minnesota police station. Like, look, liberal violence got plenty of passes um, in this country. And I, I again, want to be a hundred percent clear. I think can, these can people even imagine, are criminals. But hold on a second. Yeah. Can you even imagine MSNBC playing something like that? Uh, no, no, I cannot. No, no, you can't. Yeah. Case closed. But they already did. It's not Case like they closed. didn't broadcast violence in the past. The I whole mean, most peaceful just, riot. Oh, Sean Hannity said this was meme. quote unquote amazing. Yeah, I, look, I think it's bad. I'm not supporting it. But I mean, how many pe how many people were on TV during the BLM riots being like, well, you know, the riot is the voice of the unheard. And they were is it condemned. Their Martin? No, they were. Yes, they no, were no. by Joe Biden and all every no. Democrat yeah, and then ran on. on. We're after, actually the ones who want to fund the police and it's the Republicans who want to defund them. Months later, in the moment, they were supported dramatically by every liberal commentator, every But you also have to remember, the overwhelming, was, especially at the beginning, the overwhelming percentage of Black Lives Matter uh, protests 
protests were peaceful. There were protests all over the country, and many of them were peaceful, and the vast majority of people who participated in them were peaceful. So it's also not fair to smear the whole thing as like they were all violent. People who marched silently, go, go, great. Right. You know, I have no I have no issue with you. I sat by, I watched them, I said, hey, good to go. People who burned down, but this is the thing. Look, they burned down that Minnesota police station, what, six days or whatever into the whole George Floyd thing. It's not like it just kicked off and it was like all kumbaya sure. like at the beginning. Yeah, you know, I things agree. went bad very, very quick. Look, I'm not, there's not a lot of disagreement. I don't think, though, that there is a double standard in the way that you're saying, given what we all had to live through. I, I mean, cannot imagine a situation reverse that unfolds on camera that, first of all, the hosts are just like, that was incredible, and it's a blip on the radar, and the person who got attacked is the one that gets the citation. I can't imagine it. Listen, you can't argue a counterfactual. Who knows how it would unfold? But I, again, I can't even imagine that same thing happening on MSNBC or CNN. Let me give you an example. These migrants who just beat up uh, NYPD cops, uh, they were just arrested, yeah. the guy flipped them off. I mean, how many people watching MS MSNBC know about that story? That like, has come been, on, they that don't has know been massively covered. Yeah, it's been massively covered by the right-wing no, media and the no, New York it, that Post. Has gotten, no, like, that's When I Google huge, it, it's what, that ABC News, coverage. Fox News, mm -hmm. New York Post, mm -hmm. it's barely covered by NBC. Even then it's because it's like, Kathy Hope. I did, you know what? Actually, yeah. I saw Reverend Sharpton yeah. commenting on that exact same thing on MSNBC. Well, I don't watch MSNBC. I don't, I don't either, yeah, but I yeah, saw the headline yeah, about it. Yeah. So it got did get coverage on MSNBC. Anyway, yeah. we can stop arguing about the counterfactual. That was an absolutely insane thing to unfold on Fox News. And for the dude who got beat up because he was brown and speaking Spanish, apparently, to be the one that ends up with the citation and the cops cover for these assholes, you know, vigilante Listen, hate crime perpetrators on the street. I'm with you on that one. You know, uh, to my brothers who are out there who are walking around speaking Spanish, you know, you don't you don't deserve to be wrapped up on the street. I think that's totally nuts. All right. I hope, let's... The, I hope the guys who did uh, go to jail. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.